Welcome to Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, the crime critic, back with another episode with y'all, right? With me in the house today, I got a, both of my, my friends. I got Michael. Y'all familiar with him? We've done episodes together. And I got a, a friend that had done one of my earlier episodes named Brian. And we're going to be talking about something that I think everybody out there needs to be aware of. It's this new drug that's sweeping through the prison system, especially in Tennessee. I don't know about anywhere else, but in Tennessee, it's sweeping through. A lot of people confuse this thing here and think that uh, playing with drugs in the penitentiary is a funny thing to do. But this drug right here, y'all, is going to kill you. And if you keep using it, you're going to find yourself laying on, on your back like a cockroach. And that's going to mean something to you in a few minutes. But right now, I want my two guests to introduce themselves to you, and then we're going to kick this thing off. Uh, my, my name is Brian Curitan. Um Good friend of Joe. Been knowing him for approximately eight years now. Been incarcerated for two, 22 years. It's Michael again, everybody. Nice to be back with you. It's been uh, we had a nice delay. We ain't been able to make it in here, so yeah, we can have us a nice long conversation today. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a nice stimulating conversation. I think that this is gonna be one of the better episodes. This is more of a warning episode. I want people to be aware of the dangers of using drugs in general, but this particular drug that uh, is sweeping through the prison system, I think it's uh, it, it it deserves particular attention as far as uh, the damage that it does to the brain. This is not something that I think anybody should be playing with. And let's just get it going. We're going to talk about this. Brian is going to give us the outlet of this because uh, he has not some uh, personal experience with it, but he's witnessed the effects of this drug and, and uh, how they use it. So I'm going to be talking to him. He was sharing this story with me the other day, and uh, it just piqued my curiosity. I heard about this drug back in 2017, 18, but uh, I've never seen it. Uh, I don't know how it works. I just know what I've been told. Don't want to know how it works for, for that matter as far as using I don't get high. I recommend nobody get high. But uh, Brian, tell me, uh, what's the name of this drug? It's called Deuce. It's called Deuce. Yep. Do you have uh, any information as far as why it's called deuce or just it's just the name no i mean that's just that's just the the nickname or uh, that they gave what they it. call it yeah do you know where it came <clears throat> from no i don't know where it originated from i, I just yeah from. just it's it's rampant in the prison system it's rampant in the prison system yeah i was talking to somebody else in preparation for this show uh, about it and they told me that a lot of people uh that are ODing in the system most people think that they're ODing off of fentanyl, right? Mm -hmm. But he says it's a combination of, he says sometimes even when they think it's just fentanyl, it's this stuff called deuce, right? Uh, I'm not sure if that's true, but he had uh, some insight into it, too. It just surprised me that he did. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, so, I, I mean, I'm not in the loop these days. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I really don't know what's going on. I heard about it, like I said, a few years ago, but I don't really know anything about it. So... How? What is this drug made of? What is it? Man, this is crazy. It is made of bug spray, bug literal spray. bug spray, raid or any raid. kind of bug spray. Oh, yeah. any kind of bug spray. Yeah. And spray, you yeah. spray it on paper yeah. and you let it dry out and you break off spray a little. Spray it on regular? Regular paper. paper. What? That's why it's so undetectable and easy to transport. It's not like weed or right. cocaine or pills, other drugs. Right. You could have it in your property or any kind of and any nobody, of your stuff. So, I, but you know, when I think about that, it would have to have a smell. I don't want to get too far off track, but when you said that, as far as easier to smuggle, it would have to have a smell to it. Yeah, but it's not real strong. It's not that strong nope. once it dries. Right. So I, I question: What is it? Is it the, is it deep that's in it that you're getting high off of, or is it is it is it, is it deep? Uh, what what is deep? Well, you, you know, remember, I don't know nothing about none of this stuff. You know, that's what's used in, in mosquito spray. In mosquito spray. Oh, D E E T. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've seen that on the package, but I don't know what that means. Because you you you're further along with this than I am. You said how long ago you heard about it? 2017, 18, Man, something I like just that. heard about it today. It, today was your first time. <laughs> so, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, yeah. deep, the reason why they use deep in bug spray because it does something to the neurological functions of a of an insect. Yeah. So okay. therefore yeah. they put it in that, use it when guys get high off of it. So it's, it, it's, 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 it's a neurological type of fit. Oh, they got to be crazy. So it's is it scented? Is. is it scented or people have bug spray in prison? It's scented. Both. Both? Both. Mm -hmm. But that mainly, thing. but mainly scented. 
Main the sentiment, yeah. Main the sentiment. I get that. I get that. I get that. But it's so it's so many different ways that could be sent in that it's, right. it's all, it would be almost impossible to stop. It's almost with. undetectable, almost. That's one of the reasons I wanted to do this show because I'm more of a personal responsibility type person. Uh, don't get me wrong. I don't let the system off the hook as far as you know their responsibility and trying to stop it from getting in. But I'm more about the individual taking responsibility for their own behavior. You know what I'm saying? That's why I wanted to do this show to warn people. Don't try this stuff. Don't use this. This is not something that uh, is funny. Uh, you think that you're getting high. You're really killing yourself. You know what I'm saying? You're really killing yourself. So tell me uh, how they use it. How do they use this thing? What they do is, I mean, it comes in, you can buy it $100 a sheet, you know. A regular size sheet of paper. Sheet of paper. Eight and, and a half by 11. It. Yep. $100. And $100 for that. And you break off literally a teeny tiny piece, something about the size of a grain of rice. Something about the size of and a grain of rice. that wow. right there, and they get, you know, batteries and a razor blade and sit it on top of it. And when it when you touch okay, the Okay, slow down. Hit rewind on that. <laughs> Explain that again. How? What do you mean? You know you how take, you get, you know, two batteries and a razor yeah. and you tell, you know, if you have them flipped opposite sides and you right. touch one and the other, it's going to light the razor. It lights up. Right. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah, sit, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they sit Look, a little he, tiny piece of paper on top of the razor and when it lights up a little puff of smoke, they, you know, inhale that inhale. little smoke and just a little tiny puff, man. And that's... Man, you know what? I, that's crazy to me, right? Because... <laughs> People are so smart in here to come up with ways to do stuff like that. Get high. Yeah. But then they want to use it for the for the wrong thing. You feel what I'm saying? For the wrong thing. So they use a piece of this stuff about the size of rice. Yep. Get it. Light it on light some Light it on fire. And, and then they inhale the smoke from it. Yep. So it's not absorbed. No. Like, like acid. It's not like acid used to be <clears> back in the day. If you grab it, you're going to get high. You can nah. get high going in your system. Yeah. Nah, like you that. smoke it. But so you, you smoke, smoke this. It. Mm-hmm. That's the way I've seen it. That's the way you've seen That's the only way. Golly. So I guess it would be like Oh, I take it back. I'm sorry. I've seen them snort it. Do what? Yeah, and I've seen them snort it before. Wait a minute. But it's paper. It's paper. So I guess it can be absorbed because they snort it. I've seen them. So if it can be absorbed, then it can be put in the eyelids. Yeah, so it could be like acid. Yeah, it could be like like acid. acid. Like acid. Yeah, be like acid or suboxone. You can put it in your eyelid or something like that. Yep. Oh, and, that's they, scary. and for what they've told me, the guys, because I'm, I'm like you, I was curious. I'm like, how does it? Because I had a cellular man. That's a that's a that's a story yeah, t- for uh, another no, episode. I don't want to tell that story. Then I mean, you got personal experience with it. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I didn't mean to be funny. I mean, it's not funny, but I mean, the, the the story now that I look back on it, it's it's funny, but it isn't funny. But no, I don't know. Let's ask this question. Wait a minute. You know, I'm all about educating the people, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes stupid is funny. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on now. Yeah. Sometimes stupid is funny. Yeah. And 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 I I don't want to diminish the seriousness of this because you know somebody could die from this, right? Have died from this. Really? They have. Seen wow. It. Seen and it. I, and I and I don't want and I don't want to make light of that either. But to me, this it seems so stupid and unbelievable that that it, it is funny to an extent, and it's a sad funny. You yeah, know what I'm saying? That's it's that's a sad that's, funny. that's a good way to put yeah, yeah, what yeah, I meant, funny. but. If you, use, if you use about an inch piece of it and smoke it, that will kill you. And I've seen that because I've seen have guys that have bad trips off of it. Right. And uh, but like I said, my celly, he used it. And I always know his eyes be real, real red and the eyes be looking all droopy. I'm like, man. You, so you that's know? what, so when they smoke it, they get. They so eyes like, they look like a, like a, a weed high. Like you know, like a weed high, high your eyes get real slanted like and okay. you, know, you look Chinese is what they okay. say, you know, okay. but, and you're like, man, you know, I hit, got to hit a deuce. I'm like, you know, and that's when I, you know, started learning more about it and he told, broke it down to me. I'm like, bro, I don't want that around me. You know, I don't, I don't do drugs. I don't live that lifestyle no more. So I don't want that around me. That's real. And I would throw stuff, you know, tell me, bro, you might want to find you somewhere else to move, but. I came back from, you know, I was in a barber school and I came back from me sitting on the toilet in his in his drawers, in his underwear, in his boxer drawers. And they're burning and I, up. And I'm like, man, what in the world? <laughs> he's on fire. Yeah, he's literally <laughs> on fire. So, yeah. and he's like, man, I, 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 I'm like, oh, man, oh, here we go. I said, this man going to get me messed up, man, because, uh uh-uh. So, mm-hmm. I picked him up. He had bunks. He was on the top bunk. I'm on the bottom bunk. So, I picked him up. 
and you know carefully because the man's in his drawers, so I ain't I trying would to. I hope that you did. Yeah, so I you did. <laughs> you put some gloves on. Yeah, for real. <laughs> so I picked him up and put him up in the bed, and he just sitting up there, just really just He's going in and out, just in a daze and talking crazy. So I started getting his stuff and putting him in the bag because. I was going, hey, man, you got to go, yeah, you, man. You, you this, fed this, up. Yeah, exactly. That was the last straw there. So I helped him put his pants on, and, and I put his shirt over his head. <laughs> he didn't even have his arms in, in the sleeves. I just put his head just through put the, his arms in the shirt. Yeah, that's now, it. Y'all, let, me, let, me, let me explain <laughs> this to y'all, right? Now, for those that don't know, the shirts that we wear, they don't have buttons. It's like a pullover. You got to pull it over the top of your head, stick your arms through the uh, arm parts of the shirt. He throwed the shirt over the man's head. They didn't give him a chance to put it on. So he's like he's in a straight jacket. You know what I'm saying? But go ahead. Go ahead. So I'm grabbing him. I'm pulling him through the through the unit by his shirt. And just he, dragging him out. Just dragging him. And Where's I, the sympathy after this mic? Huh? You ain't had no sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go ahead, man. Go ahead, go ahead. Like I said, man, I ain't trying to get, get in trouble for this man because, you know, uh, so I... I that Took him down the, to the empty cell, man, and now, I pushed him in. Minute, wait a minute. Hold on. You're dragging him through. What the police say? <laughs> man, nothing. Just they sitting just, there. She's sitting back, so they see, tripping off of it herself. See, yeah, now, that's I the feel, penitentiary. Now, that's the yeah, real yeah, penitentiary. That's yes, penitentiary. Yeah, dragging she, him through the pod. They don't to say nothing. Everybody laughing. Going about their business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, is that, what is that called, though? There's a definition for that. What's that? Put him on the door. Yeah, that's basically what I did. I had to put him on the door because... I refuse to, you know, get in trouble, you know, because of somebody else's actions. But, mm -hmm. yeah, man, I pushed him in the room, man, and put, threw his stuff in the room and slammed the door behind him and went on about my business. Right. And, you know, and the man would have $125 worth of commissary in two days and be gone. Gone. Then come and ask me, man, you got, no, nah, I ain't got nothing for you, brother. I'm not finna support your habit. I, so he I, was I, paying for it with his commissary. Yeah. So nine times out of ten, that means he had somebody sending him some money. Put on his books all of what he had earned from his job inside. Yeah. And he was well, using we maybe like $34, $35 a month. And then he getting his mother, you know, he's getting on the, the phone money. with us, giving some sob story, and they be a fool and send him some money and he get high. Well, they, they love him. I mean, yeah, but. They love him. Yeah, that's now, true. It's different if they know that he's getting high. No, don't get me wrong. I think stupid is funny. Yeah. But he's taking but advantage of He's the taking family. advantage of them. They're not they're, yeah, they're, that they're cool. ignorant to what he's doing right, right now. If they know what he's doing, then shame on them, right? But right. you know right. what I'm saying? But go ahead. But yeah, but that but other than that though, man, he he put me up on a lot of stuff and I'm like, man, what in the world is y'all? And I asked him, I said, uh, I said, how does it make man? It's like a weed high. I said, Can I tell you a, a secret? Mm -hmm. I said, It's not weed. It's not weed, man. But yeah. let me ask you this though. Let me ask you this. So as far as you know, if you touched it. It wouldn't seep into your skin, as far as you know. That I don't know, because do man, know I just looked snorting. at it. I looked at it from a distance, and I seen, and I, you know, try to go holler at somebody, and I would pick my head through the door to holler at him. I see a dude sitting at the table using. I'm like, oh man, I hurry up and shut the door, shut and you know, go on somewhere. I ain't trying see, to. That's what I want to know. What grade of bug spray is it? Is it the bug spray <laughs> that you got? That you got to <laughs> evacuate the house while they spray? You know, because that's some that's some big stuff. That's, yeah, that's, some that's, stuff. that's, that's so, commercial stuff. Right? Yeah, and, and, it, and it seems like it should be a cheaper Industrial, drug. Yeah. It seems like it should be a cheaper drug if it's just bug spray on a piece of paper. You can go to a cheap. dollar store. You know the part, like well, okay, let's let's, let's wait a minute. Spray. Let's talk a little bit. You talking about it should be cheap? You talking about when you sell it in here? No, I'm saying like like. The junkies that are getting it, right? It's a cheap high. It seems like you should get your people to just spray some. It seems like it'd be they might not have ways to get is it, it in. That's why I say, is it the industrial stuff or is it just the no, can bug spray? Stuff, that's, yeah. they, but, that's that's what I want to know. I, why would that matter? In because, the price of it? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Hold on, let me put my dope boy head back on for just a second, <laughs> just a quick, quick, just a quick, quick. <laughs> the price of drugs is not determined by, you know, what I'm saying the easiness of it for me to get it or manufacture, right? The price of drugs includes all of my trouble of getting it in. Oh, I, I get that. I'm talking about yeah, the junkies. Economics. I'm talking about the junkies. You got somebody out there spraying the stuff. Just yeah, go get you some. Go to the store, get you a thirty $2. pack of paper, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. Or the they dollar might store not go or to something. visit. They might not go to visit. But I'm saying, if you can mail it in, yeah, I think is, that's is a lot of what they're doing. Yeah. I just, I, but I, if I, it was me, I'm keeping it real. I done took my dope boy hat off, y'all, so don't send me no comments or nothing like that talking about <laughs> Joe done flashback or none of that. I just did that to give you a little insight, okay? But now let me go to the other side. I ain't never been on no dope now. <laughs> but I'm going to speak on this here, right? 
you know, if I was getting hot, I am not going to let it be mailed in. No, not in my name. How would you do it? If I'm going to get hot, I'm just going to get it off the land. But there's another junkie in there, in there with you. You just get it sent in there. That's true, but I'll be worried about him telling him. You know how it goes in here? I don't know mm-hmm. what he's talking about. Yeah, that works for seven days. <laughs> you go into the hole for seven days. And they you start know. threatening you Yeah, all this and that, right? And yeah. it might not be pretty, but I feel you on that, though. I feel you on that. I, um, I've, well, I may even cut you off, but yeah, go ahead. I've seen people die. And yeah, what is the reaction? When, describe that. The people uh The ones that have a bad world. trip of, uh, off of it, they do too much. I mean, they do it. You know about the size of a stamp. Well, a stamp is what, like, what, an inch all the way around? A stamp? Or, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty big They do to about a, rice, a half of a, a, a quarter. If you do a stamp and, and cut it up in four ways, one, uh, one quarter part of a stamp is too much. That's too that much. Would, that would kill you. And they've told me that, and guys would have mm, a bad mm, trip mm. and spaz out, and, man, conv- body would convulse. And right. Ain't, ain't no control over they like they're having a seizure yeah because like i said it's got that deed in it and it has a neurological effect on insects let alone the yeah, human no being yeah. so yeah it's it's crazy man yeah, this is not just... fda approved to smoke right no yeah. absolutely not <laughs> it's not but... fda approved to touch <laughs> no none of that right none of that i dig that i dig that um Anything else you want to add to that man before we wrap this thing up man just man don't fool with it man i mean it's just sad to say, man, a lot of people, man, I thought at first to me, I, I'll keep it real. I thought it was just, man, maybe it's just the white dudes. No, man, it's black, Everybody white, old, high. young. Man, Everybody I mean, they just high. trying to find yeah. any little thing to get high because, hey, man, I can't get a hold of no weed, can't get a hold of no of nothing else. Let me get high with something else. And it's it's, it's sad, let me, let me, man. But, no, you know what? Hold on. Before You're literally putting yourself. poison in your body, literally. Yeah, poison. But, uh, but you just touched on something else that... uh. I want to comment on man. Um, as far as long as I've been here, people have been getting high. You know what I mean. But I don't think people really think about why mm. the majority of people in prison want to get high. You know what I'm saying? Escape the reality. Yeah, you got to yep, escape yep, this. Yeah, I agree and, with and, that. And, mo- yep. and you don't have anything constructive outside of how they want you to function in prison and go about your day in prison right. to distract you. You know, you can only play basketball, dominoes, chess, and checkers right. so many times. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And I think that's one of the bigger issues uh, for me uh, now that, uh, you know, we're talking about something like this. Uh, I think that people need to pay more attention to uh, why people are getting high, not necessarily what they're getting high off of. Now, that's, that's important, mm-hmm. but the level of despair and hopelessness that's in and get to the root of this the prison. Problem. Yeah, it, it drives people to want to escape reality, man. And um, you know, I don't really know what you can do about that. You know, I occupy my time with other things. Uh, but I think that's something that people should be given some kind of consideration to. So uh, if you have a family member that is incarcerated and uh, they're getting high, uh, talk to them, man. Uh, I don't know, you know, exactly what you could say to get somebody to stop getting high in this environment but I know for me I used to smoke weed I love that weed back in the day now I'm gonna keep it real with y'all but I stopped smoking weed uh, because my dad asked me to that was the last thing he asked me to do before he uh, passed away mm-hmm. didn't want to do it he gonna tell me let me tell you the story real quick <laughs> my daddy was in a hospice house right and they had told me that he wasn't going to live too much longer, right? So they come to the prison and say, well, we're going to take we're going to take uh, you to see your pops because, you know, he, he's got a few months to live, according to the doctors. So they drive me all the way down to Nashville. I go into the hospice house to see him. I'm sitting up in there. And my dad was always a big man, 6'4", real big. But when I seen him sitting on the bed, he was real small. They had amputated his legs. And he just looked real small. You know what I'm saying? I never mm-hmm. seen him like that. He had lost a lot of weight. So I knew, you know, it, it, this, it is what it is. So I sat down on the bed beside him. You know, I got the handcuffs on. They didn't even want to take the handcuffs off me. But I got the handcuffs on and whatnot. And he says, uh, how you doing? I said, I'm good. And, and the officers that had taken me there, right, 
they were some good dudes. They were looking at me. They were like, uh, now I'm going to tell them the truth. Tell them what happened. I said, man, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be putting my business out there like that. <laughs> now, what had happened that morning, well, let me back up a little bit, y'all. That night, when they told me that my pops was going to die, I go back to the cell. I go back to the cell, and we're told, I, 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 I told my cellar what had happened. So he come with the joint. We blaze up. It's partly cloud in the room. We ain't put nothing up to cover the windows or nothing. I'm in her crying. My cellar crying. I don't know why he crying. You know what I mean? But he's going up for parole that morning. They're going to take me to Nashville that morning. So we're laying in that office, walk by. He ain't say nothing. Mm -hmm. I figured he's just letting us get a free pass because he knows the circumstances right. about my pops, right? <laughs> about 3, 4 in the morning, he knock on the door. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> he said, y'all know what it is. Get up. Got a piss test. Mm. I said, man, mm -hmm. I know we dirty. Drink it all the while I can. Go down to uh, the visitation gallery. My cellar goes in there first. He fails the piss test. Yeah. Now, I'm looking at him when yeah. he takes his test. Yeah. The glass, yeah. the bottle that he pissed in, it's clear as a bell. Mm -hmm. It's clear as water. I said, I, I don't stand a chance. Because <laughs> I'm thinking drinking all this water is going to help. He fails. I go up there. I sit down. I take the piss test. I'm sitting in front of the, and the man to get me the piss test was the internal affairs. Mm. He been waiting to get me for years. I can't get away. So now he said, Joe, he said, look, the people are waiting on you. They ready to take you to nap. He said, if you trust me, you know, cause it hadn't showed the lines right at that point, right? And for what y'all don't know, if you've never taken a piss test, it's these bottles, they put the urine in and it's got this thing on the side where two lines are showing. If two lines show, that means you're dirty, right? So the lines hadn't shown up at this point. So I'm like, yeah, come on, man, because I got to go. So I went on and signed the papers just in case. And the unit manager, she witnessed the whole thing, so it ain't going to be no funny bunny stuff. You feel me? Mm -hmm. By the time I stood up and was walking off, he said, hold up. Wait mm -hmm. a minute. He said, I think I got you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the lines popped up on the thing, man. Yeah. He yeah. zipped it up, yeah. put it in the back. Yeah. I'm like, what the? For sheezy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel to go down here. Now I got to think about this. and How am I going to get out of this piss test? We get down there. Anyway, we're in there with my pops. So the officer tells him, he said, man, you know, uh, he just failed a piss test. So my daddy, he looked at me. He know I like that weed. He looked at me. He said, boy, I need you to do something for me. I'm like, sure, what's up, pops? He said, I need you to quit smoking weed. I said, man, you tripping. Mm. What? He said, at least until you get out. I said, do you know how long that's going to be, man? You want me to stop at least until I get out? That's going to be a long time. He said, man, stop, man because you're going to lose your visit, so on and so forth. Right. I told him I, I quit. And I haven't smoked weed since. You feel what I'm saying? I haven't smoked weed since. But it took something like that for me, you know what I'm saying, to turn away from smoking weed. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, but I don't know what, you know, if you have a loved one that's uh, getting high, I don't know what to, to tell you to tell them. But uh, try that. Try to appeal to them in a personal way. You know what I'm saying? Let them know that you love them and how much harm can be brought to them for doing that. You know what I'm saying? How they won't be able to see you at visit. Whatever you got to tell them, get them to quit. And most importantly, do not support their habit by sending them any money. Yeah. Don't do that because at that point, you're enabling them. And if they happen to die, you're going to have to live with that guilt because you helped them mm -hmm. die. You feel what I'm saying? But with that said, I want to go around real quick and see if, if my friends got anything they want to add before we lock this thing down and end this episode. Uh, Michael, you got anything you want to say? I just have to say, there's some smart people, man. And I always say that they gave me too much time to think. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. Because I got my degree. I got my certification in HVAC. I've done everything I need to do. I'm reading uh -huh. books. I'm doing, you know, preparing. So there's no way that I'm going to fail when I get out. Because I, right. got, I got a plan. You got right. a plan. Well, several plans. But they gave these folks too much time to think. They yeah. sitting around thinking about how to get high. And who would have thought that you can spray some paper on some on or bug spray on some paper Man. and get high off of that? I mean, that's some smart people. Yeah, it takes some, yeah, it takes a little bit of ingenuity, right? Yes, very yeah. much. But it's stupid too. Now we're gonna keep it the theme going. Stupid <laughs> is funny, y'all. Just keep that in mind now. Not to try to take away from the seriousness of it. You know what I mean? But uh yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off though. Yeah. Yeah. But you got anything they, you want to uh, say, Brian? Yeah, they just using they 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 powers for evil, man, instead of good, man. But <clears throat> the thing is, when you want this, this deuce, man, when they don't, 
have it for about a day or so, they go through withdrawals like mm. any other drug. So mm. they go through shivers. They be, you know, I've seen a man uh, be pacing back and forth, can't sit still. You know, they be jonesing for it, man, you know. And I be like, wow. I mean, I literally just sat back in the pod and just was like a, wa watching a la like watching a lab rat. And I'm just sitting back and watching wow. how they reacting, wow. how they react when they get high and after they get high, then after they don't have it for a couple of days. And they'll check in. They'll owe, you know, four, five hundred dollars and check pay. in. Can't pay the bill. So but yeah, man, I just it, it's crazy, man. But uh but like Michael said, man, I my past twenty two years, man, I it's I've done a lot of self, you know. You know, I just been analyzing myself a whole lot. A lot of self evaluation. Self evaluation, yeah, man. And I'm like I said, I got my master barber license. I've That's taken good. all the classes that I can. Yep. You know, I just better myself mentally, physically, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, you know, prison can help you if you let it, but it all depends on the individual if you want to change your life. But if you want to still be a knucklehead. You know what you're doing here is what you're gonna do. What you're doing here is what you're gonna do out there, man. Absolutely. The, the circles you run in, the type of people you hang around, and how you yeah. carry yourself, man. But yeah. That's all I got. That's all I got to add, man. That's what's up. Well, look here, y'all. It's been another episode. I'm, I appreciate y'all doing this too, right? Appreciate you. I'm gonna wrap this thing up. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, the Crime Critic, and I say peace, y'all.